Hello and welcome. This is Wendy. I'm excited you're here with me today. Today I have two ideas using the Wiggle Worm bundle. So right up front I have to tell you this was one of my very favorite bundles in the catalog. It was in my top five. I absolutely love it and I couldn't wait to create with it. So the first thing I did is I took some Memento Tuxedo Black ink and I just stamped out multiple bugs. Um, I just wanted to have a whole variety of bugs stamped out that I could color and play with and um, not have to keep going back and stamping. So I decided to stamp a couple of everything and yeah, that's, that's basically it. So here's a little funny about this stamp set. There's actually coordinating patterns to stamp on top of these bugs. So like there's a little one that's got little chevron shapes. There's a stamp that has um, like little lines and little dots. And I totally did not realize that until after I made these cards. So um, because I'm always in a hurry and I'm never like, I, I just need to slow down sometimes. That's what it boils down to. So this little bug down here at the bottom, I'm just gonna tell you right up front is my favorite bug in the bug world, which is a praying mantis. I love praying mantises. I think they're really cool because they're kind of funky and weird and they're different than other bugs. They don't bite, um, or at least I've never been bit by one, but they do have really pokey like claws on their feet. And so yeah, there's that. And also the female praying mantis eats the male praying mantis when they're done mating. Yeah, that's a fun fact for you. So a little bit gross and creepy there, but um, she like bites his head off and eats him apparently. Gross. So, um, you know, she's a woman with a mission and once the duties are fulfilled, I guess she just moves on with life. So, um, then I decided to make this one a ladybug because it just looked like a ladybug to me. So I used Poppy Parade um, Dark and Light. And then I went in with Smoky Slate for her face and her other part of her body. And then a darker Smoky Slate for a little bit of shading. And then I added Basic Black for her dots on her body. Um, again, could have just used a stamp set, but apparently I'm lame and didn't realize. I love how she turned out though, so I really don't care. Okay, so then I decided to use Flirty Flamingo to color this dragonfly, which I'm calling a dragonfly. That's what it looks like to me. And I'm using Flirty Flamingo and a little bit of Lovely Lipstick to darken some of the areas of that uh, dragonfly yellow for her face and pool party for her wings same with the one next door pool party for the wings and then I'm going to go with Highland Heather for the body um, I just thought it would be fun to have shading on all of these totally unnecessary there's my rich razzleberry going in to really darken it up at the bottom actually it might be blackberry bliss I'm sorry and then again, yellow daffodil delight for the face and some flirty flamingo in the mouths. Then I wanted to do a fun thing for this little bug. I don't even know what kind of bug it's supposed to be. <clears throat> I actually think it's supposed to be maybe a bumblebee, but um, I it didn't work out the way I wanted. So I realized really quick, I used shaded spruce, light and dark, and then I used soft sea foam in the middle to give it lightness in the middle because I it got too dark on the top one for me and I wanted it to be light in the center. Um, I still colored it even though I ended up not using it. And then for my caterpillars, I decided to use Call Me Clover. And I would, I, the thing about these caterpillars is you could do them all kinds of different colors. So honestly, it's just like, sky's the limit there. On this first caterpillar I used I think uh, pool party for the top and then I didn't like the way it looked so I used soft sea foam for the one on the top and I liked that much better. Um, the cool thing is there is a stamp that coordinates with that caterpillar to give it little dots and stuff. I just didn't note it. Frankly, my caterpillar looks more like a tomato worm. I don't know if you guys get tomato worms wherever you live, but in California, we have these big giant green 
caterpillar looking things that get on our tomato plants and eat our tomato plants and they will even eat a tomato if they're there long enough um but when we find them we have to take them off and smush them because otherwise they will completely destroy your tomatoes um using pool party light and dark here for these clouds and then I'm going to cut those out and I've just got a bunch of random little pieces cut out over there because I'm going to make a couple of different cards. So the first card that I'm going to make I'm using Coastal Cabana ink and I'm just going to do an ink blended um, sky. There's really no need to do the bottom because I'm going to cut grass or I have cut grass to put at the bottom. This die set comes with some grass. It comes with that big leaf that you see up there in the left hand corner. Um, it comes with clouds, mushrooms. So it's got a lot of really cute little stuff in it. So you don't, that don't necessarily, I'm sorry, let me start again. There's a lot of cute die cuts that don't have a stamp that goes with them. So like the leaf, there's no stamp that goes with the leaf, but you can cut out that super cute leaf that looks like caterpillar, caterpillar has been chomping on it. I can talk, I swear. So I'm ink blending with the Coastal Cabana and I just want a nice soft um, background and I'm not trying to make it really smooth because I kind of want it to look like, you know, there's possibly clouds in the sky and um, I just really love it. I think it came together great um, or that part of it came together great. And then for the bottom, like I said, I'm going to cut grass and I'm going to cut out these little clouds. So I filmed two separate videos when I made these cards because you're going to see a whole different card at the end of this video, which actually is my favorite of the two cards. But um, I originally thought I would make it two separate videos and then I decided, nah, I would keep it all in one because they're pretty similar. And I've started kind of having a theme of having longer videos on Fridays. So this is one of those videos. Um, disclaimer right up front, there will be story time and I will be chatting about things not related to these cards. So if you don't prefer that or you don't like that, you are welcome to click off the channel. Um, this Whisper White cardstock that I did my ink blending on, by the way, is cut at three and three quarters by five inches. So it's kind of a small, um, little piece of paper. I wanted to create something that was a little bit smaller so that when I put it on the front of my card base, I would be able to have pieces hanging off the edges. I always think that that's kind of cool. It's like um, your scene is almost escaping its space. So I think that that's kind of fun. So here I am super sorry that I'm off camera some. Um, it is so hard when you're filming and you're like trying to make a card to figure out where you want everything and to do stuff and and then make sure that you're on camera. <laughs> um, it just happens from time to time. Hopefully I rectify it at some point, but um, it does happen where you just are like doing your thing and you're having a good time and then you look up and you're like, oh my god, half this video I was a little bit off camera while I was videoing it. That is stupid. So um, I'm just basically taking all the things that I've colored and cut and organizing them on the um, paper the way I think that I'm going to want them. And um, I do know for sure that I wanted to have a lot of little bugs on there and I knew I would make this a birthday card. So here's my struggle with cards like this. When I look at this card, I think this really is a children's card. I feel like I should give it to a child. But on the flip side, I would love to get a card like this in the mail that has a bunch of little bugs on it. So I'm always like, at a loss for is this appropriate to send to an adult probably if I really know the person like if I know the person and I know that they enjoy the outdoors or they like cutesy things it could be fine but probably wouldn't send it to just anybody um I don't know I tell me your thoughts what are your thoughts on that like do you have cards that you make for people specific or do you just make a bunch of cards and go you know what, I'm just going to give this to anybody and I don't care if they like it or not. <laughs> Is that appropriate? I don't know. 
So I'm adding dimensionals to the back of this because I want to pop it up on the front of my card. And I have to tell you guys, I sped this video way up because the original video was 45 minutes long. So I've managed to cut like 23 minutes out of this video by editing, um, speeding some of it up, cutting some pieces out, and it worked well. Um, but it's still a really long video, but I do make two cards, so there's that. So I'm um, removing all the dimensionals off the back of this, and you will see when I turn it over that I'm really not done with it. I think I'm done with it, but then I decide it looks too empty, and I have to do more. So I knew that I wanted a sentiment to go off the right side there, and that's why I kind of left that little area blank. I wanted to use the happy birthday sentiment, and again, there's only so many people that I could give you make my heart flutter, I love you wiggle worm, cute as a bug, like, I, you know, that basically means my, my husband or my kid. And so um, I knew if I created cards with happy birthday, that I could use them for other people, be it kids or adults, I knew I could use it multiple places and love the font, love the font. The font on this stamp set is amazing and I absolutely love it. So I'm taking the um, piece of cardstock here and trimming it at, at the end to make a little ribbon. This is my move, you know, I, I do this all the time. It's like my favorite thing to do for a sentiment. And so then I had to just decide where I was going to place it. And I knew I kind of wanted it down in that right hand side in that space that I left kind of open. Now after I did this, I looked and I was like, this is just too empty. I don't like how empty it was at the top. I could have added more clouds, but I thought, why not add another bug? So I went ahead and grabbed another one of my bugs and I added him there. And this is the benefit of like stamping a bunch of images and coloring them is that then you're able to kind of and then I was like should he stand on top of the sentiment and then I decided no I liked him better like he was flying off in the air um so anyway that's the card so we're gonna work on the second card now we're gonna do more ink blending I'm using um pumpkin pie is this pumpkin pie yes pumpkin pie I think <laughs> Now I cannot remember the colors I used. I think it's lovely lipstick and gorgeous grape. Um, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Pumpkin pie, gorgeous grape and lovely lipstick. Um, they're really fun colors together. They go together so nicely. And so I wanted kind of like a night sky scene. So if you can walk, see here, if I would have just stopped here, then it's got these very defined separated colors, right? But if you will take the time to keep blending and blending and blending, you will get these beautiful finished backgrounds that just are stunning. They look like a night sky. It looks like a sunset and it's just beautiful. So I worked this sucker over. I mean, I went over it and over it and over it and over it and over it with all three colors until I got it blended out the way I wanted it to be. So when I was all done, this is what I had. Isn't it pretty? So then I took my little splatters and did my inks or my water splatters, which left this really cool texture and background. And then I was able to build my card from there. Since I had already, uh, yeah, FYI, you definitely always want to make sure it's dry before you do anything else because I particularly wanted to um, do some heat embossing. And if you do heat embossing and there's a wet area, you're going to have a problem. So when I first started out, I thought I was going to do this little leaf with like kind of a bug sitting on it or flying off of it. And I really did not like the color of the leaf. I did a call me clover leaf and I didn't really care for it. And I kept looking at it and trying to decide, you know, basically what would make me happy with this card. And so here you're really seeing my creative process of where I'm just kind of thinking like, hmm, 
how am I going to make this card come together? I have this beautifully ink blended background and I really wanted to do it justice and uh, by making a really cute card. So um, I ended up deciding to grab a piece of Whisper White cardstock and my Bermuda Bay ink and I did some ink blending on this piece of Whisper White cardstock and then cut my leaf out of that. Now you might be saying why wouldn't you just grab a piece of Bermuda Bay ink, uh, cardstock and cut out of that? The reason is because I wanted a softer look that kind of looked and matched the ink blending feel. So you're going to see here the difference. So you see how much softer this is and it's kind of got some variation in tones. You can't get that if you cut straight out of cardstock. You're just going to get a solid color. So here I was able to get a little bit lighter color and I just loved it. I loved how it came together. So I knew I was going to use the leaf, but then I could not decide how I was going to use the bugs and where I was going to put my sentiment and how many bugs I would use. And so I just struggled through and kind of did a bunch of rearranging to figure out what I was going to do. I knew I wanted to use this dragonfly because she had purple on her body. And so I thought, you know what, I am just going to use the dragonfly only on this card and then I ended up using a caterpillar at the end as well but you'll see that here in a minute so um I decided on the happy birthday sentiment again because basically I looked at them and looked at them and I was like come on use a different sentiment and then I was like you know what no I just I, it's, I, I just want a couple really cute birthday cards for kids or for whoever that I could grab if I needed a birthday card. And I wanted it to be more than just my normal, simple, simple birthday cards. Um, I send a lot of birthday cards out in the mail. And so because of that, most of them are really simple. I mean, we're talking, sometimes I mail 30 to 50 birthday cards a month. So they have to be kept simple in order to be manageable. But every once in a while, I like to make special ones for like my nieces, my friends, um, other family members, stuff like that. I like to make them special cards that are stepped up and have a little bit of a little bit more work put into them. So funny on that note is that um, my aunt used to throw my cards away. And after seeing how much work goes into them, she keeps all of my cards now. So whenever I make her a card and send her a card, she keeps them because she realizes they're little works of art. And even by her throwing them away, that never offended me because honestly, like how many cards can you keep, right? So at some point in life, like the only cards I will never throw away or always keep are probably from my daughter and some from my husband. Um, there's some that have been really sweet where he's taken the time to write really sweet notes inside. But honestly, like if it's just a Hallmark card that he bought me and signed his name, sometimes I toss those um, after some time, not right away. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, if I get a card that's really special and I know somebody's put a lot of work into it, I keep it. Otherwise, they end up in the garbage because I just can't, you can't, keep, I would need a warehouse to keep everything right? You just can't. You just can't keep everything. Um, so anyway, we're adding this to the card base and then we're going to build it. And I used Versamark ink and white embossing powder to do the sentiment. And now I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to arrange all of the pieces onto this card. Um, side note on bugs. So I am not particularly afraid of bugs. I don't have any particular issue with bugs. I don't really mind them unless they can harm me. And then I'm not real, not a real big fan. Um, but we have these little bitty bugs where I live and they're, we call them leaf hoppers. I don't actually know what they're called. That might be the real name for them. I have no idea, but they're teeny tiny and they only come out in like the summertime and they're in the grass so when you walk these bugs just jump and fly everywhere they're not aphids they're not 
a grasshopper. I don't know what they really are, but they're small and they're hard. They almost remind me of a beetle, but they're super tiny. So they're not a beetle, I don't think. They could be in the beetle family. They don't bite. They're just really annoying. And so that is something we're dealing with right now is having a bunch of those. The other thing is we've remodeled and built a huge deck around our house. So in doing that, the first thing my husband says to me is this is going to be a spider haven. First, I want to just say, why would you say that to me? Why would you say to me, this is going to be a spider haven? I mean, come on, people. Can, do we know nothing about me? So he says that and I'm like, well, then I'm hiring somebody to come spray for bugs on a regular basis because gross. I am not having a bunch of spiders under our house. So there's the card, but I wasn't finished. So I kept looking at it and looking at it and looking at it and then decided it needed googly eyes. So I'm on a googly eye kick lately. So anyway, we hired Safeguard Pest Control. They came out, they, they did the bug spraying and it's like 45 bucks a month to have them spray. But it's so worth it to me. We have had hardly any bugs in the house. We've had a couple like spider webs or, you know, pincher bugs, earwigs, stuff like that. But for the most part, nothing. And I know it's chemicals. I know it's bad for like the earth or whatever, but it's also bad for me to get bit by a spider. I don't like it. We kind of live in the country. We really live in the country. And in fact, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Sutter Home Wines, but the Sutter Home Vineyard is behind my house. So, um, like, we are pretty rural. And, um, yeah, so I was not going to do the bug thing. And snakes are another thing that is happening right now because it's summer and we had a really long winter. And so now the snakes are out like crazy and I don't mind a good snake, but I really hate a rattlesnake. So, um, yeah, there we go. There's the card. So here are both cards finished. Love them. Tell me which one you like best. I would love to know. And if you want the wiggle worm bundle, you can purchase it from me, uh, at love it, shop, love and stampin.com. Click on either one of the images that you see here to subscribe or to watch those videos. Click the circle with my face in it to subscribe to my channel. And you can, um, yeah, enjoy the rest of this video <laughs> till it's over. Thanks so much. Bye.